Folks, how we doing? Welcome to Good Works Tractors. Today we're gonna to compare 25 horsepower machines. It kind of dawned on me just the other day, I've got three different 25 horsepower tractors right here that are all different models. So let's talk about that today. Now we don't really sell tractors too much anymore. We're really focused on selling tractor attachments, but I've got these in here. I still like to use different tractors for different projects, show different attachments, show how they work together, right? Not everybody has just a 1025R. You have other models too, other brands. So we have various makes and models flow through here from time to time. And as you can see, my brother's gonna have a tough time paying attention today. Focus, Chris, okay? We have June, the puppy out here. She's an English Cocker Spaniel, so we're kind of letting her feel out the situation. Hopefully we'll have her in more videos in the future, but you may see her in and out of this video. Okay, so a John Deere 1025R, a John Deere 2025R, and a John Deere 3025E. Why would John Deere have three different tractors with the same engine, essentially. You know, maybe rebranded a few tweaks here and there, but a 25 horsepower engine in it. Now I'm gonna try to give you some fact, but some opinion as well, because I think you wanna know what I think. And if you don't care, just tune that part out. So I think it makes a lot of sense to have the 1025R and the 3025E option available. Now, there's a tier four compliance when you have to have a regen system, some sort of emissions compliance that that 26 horsepower threshold is, is the kick-in point. So you go 26 and above, you have to have that system on there. You stay at below 26 horsepower, you don't have to have that system. Keeps the cost down, makes it a lot simpler to operate, uh, potentially lower maintenance costs in the future as well. So that's why you're gonna see the 25 horsepower variant being pretty popular, not just with John Deere, but with other tractor manufacturers as well. The one I have a problem with is the 2025R, all right? And a little bit of backstory, there's a uh, generation one and a generation two of the 2025R. And the older style, it looks completely different, all right? And that's gonna be uh, more comparable to the capabilities of a John Deere 2032R, for example. So when John Deere redesigned the 2025R, they actually put the same front end loader that's on the smaller 1025, they put that loader on here, they put the same backhoe on here, so they reduced its capability. Um, which I think was a, a miscue, a misstep in my opinion. And you guys have heard me talk about this before, so it's not new information, but if you're a new viewer, I mean, I wanna, I wanna tell you my thoughts. I really don't like this tractor model at all. I think it's, it's a, a taller center of gravity, it's still the same width as a 1025, so if you think about that, your seat is up higher, and it's still the same width, it's a little bit longer too, so it's gonna make it feel tippier, and I have personally felt that a lot when I use one of these tractors, especially if you have that backhoe on the back too, because there's a lot of that weight that's up higher on a backhoe, and if you're on uneven ground, on bumpy rough terrain, like out in a field here, or on a hill, or, or elsewhere, it's just not, it's a terrible feeling, I hate it. Now all that said, a lot of folks love this model. It's a tractor for them. Randy, I know you're watching this video. I know you love it, I know you have one. So to each their own, there's a tractor for everybody out there, but pay attention to the tippiness. Uh, if you have a cab on here too, that's also gonna really increase that, that tippy feeling. So got that out of the way, let's talk more about these tractors. Okay, so Chris just asked, can you get a cab on the 2025R? And yes, you can, you can get the Mauser cab on the 2025R and the 1025R. Now the Mauser cab, I call it an aftermarket cab, but it can be John Deere factory installed. But I give that delineation, I guess, because the larger cabs from John Deere aren't Mauser cabs. They're, they're just a John Deere cab tractor. So like on a, a 3039R or a 4066R or their five series, those are all just John Deere OEM cabs, right? And so they're gonna have air conditioning and heat. The difference on the Mauser cab that you get on these two smaller tractors is they're gonna be heat only. There's no air conditioning option available. Now on the John Deere 3025E, which also has a couple other variants, the 3032E and the 3038E, there's no Mauser cab, there's no factory cab. You can get aftermarket cabs, like a Curtis cab, for example, and that's gonna kinda just plop down on there, the, that's not gonna be installed at a John Deere factory. I've installed a Kernis cab on one of these uh, 3E tractors before, so they are also gonna have heat available, but no air conditioning. Okay, let's talk loaders, mowers, and backhoes right now. So we talked briefly about the front end loaders on these two tractors, they're identical. They're both the 120R, they're gonna lift the same amount, lift to the same height as well. On the 3E tractor over here, you're gonna have a different model, okay? So it's a D160 slash a 300E, just depends on your model year. Uh, this is actually the older style. They have updated this 3E series since uh, you see this model right here, but the loader is going to be stationary, all right? So these loaders come off if you want to, called a quick park loader. On here, you can't quickly take it off. I have seen 
online, never in person, a quick part conversion kit for this loader. Um, probably just not very popular. Lots of times on a bigger tractor, you're not gonna take your loader off anyway. The important thing to note is that on all of these loaders, you're gonna have something called the John Deere Quick Attach. We've covered that extensively, but you can take the bucket off in a, a split second and put on a set of pallet forks, put on a grapple, put on a snow pusher, put on other attachments. So if you're looking at other tractor brands, they're not gonna have the John Deere Quick Attach. They may have a Skid Steer Quick Attach, which are gonna be two levers to release the bucket from the loader and then put on those other attachments as well. But typically that's not gonna be in their base price. They may include it as an upcharge. Just make sure it has it. Okay, so let's talk about mid-mount mowers. Now, the 1025 and 2025 will both have that option available. They're gonna have a mid-PTO, which you can hook up your mower to drive over, auto connect, very nice system to have. The John Deere 3E series, that 3025E, does not have that option available. There's no way to put a belly mower underneath the tractor. Oh, and one quick note, you can get a 54 inch or a 60 inch mower deck on both these machines. Hey, eyes up here, eyes up here. All right, as far as backhoes go, all right? So this backhoe, the 260B, is what's gonna be available both for the 2025 and the 1025, all right? You're gonna see, we do have the Power Beyond Hydraulics. I do have a backhoe for this tractor as well. Now on the John Deere 3E series, that generation you're looking at right there is gonna be the first generation. Well, actually, <laughs> technically I think it's the second generation of it and they're on the third generation now, but you wanna get a 2018 or newer model year if you wanna get a backhoe on the 3E series. Now that doesn't mean you won't see some older models, 2017 model year and older um, that do have backhoes on them, but they weren't designed to accept a backhoe. So potentially you could, and there's been pictures posted online of folks that have split their tractor in half because of uh, the stresses that a backhoe can put on a tractor. There has to be a subframe, it has to be engineered. There's a lot of, a lot of thought that goes into that. And so get a 2018 and newer if you wanna get one with a backhoe. As always, we're sponsored by Bora Wheel Spacers. They are made in America, have a lifetime warranty. If your tractor feels tippy, side to side, especially if you have a cab on it, then adding a set of wheel spacers can make a big difference. Get more information on them at the link down below. All right, so I wanna talk about what you use these tractors for, but sitting down on the seat reminds me, I gotta talk about some creature comforts as well, okay? So uh, these two tractors, the 2025, 1025, are gonna be considered a premium, all right? So they're gonna have a lot of features, one I sat down in is a comfortable seat, all right? So suspension seat, armrests on it, a lot thicker pad, same thing over on the 1025. On the 3E tractor over here, this is really, well, I don't know if the E at the end, you know, 3025E, I don't know if that necessarily is supposed to mean economy, but it's kind of economy. It's kind of plain Jane, it's simple. There's not a lot of bells and whistles on it, and that's gonna help keep the price point down too. Um, but you're gonna lack those creature comforts. There's not gonna be standard cruise control. There's not gonna be tilt steering. There's not gonna be a suspension seat with armrest. Uh, the loader joystick, you can see right here with this armrest, it's very easy and accessible. Over on the 3E tractor, it's gonna be a little bit more of a reach and nothing to, to rest your arm on. So you could have some more operator fatigue over time. Even small features like this rubber floor mat on there versus a hard plastic floor not a huge deal, you know, and, and you got to decide if that's worth it or not. And um, actually Tractor Mat, we, we partner with them. They're one of the Discount Club members. They make floor mats for all sorts of tractors too. So that could be an option to consider. Okay, so before we get into some more differences between these tractors, let's talk a little bit more about what you may use them for. And if you're having trouble finding the right selection for you, maybe, I don't know, give you somebody else's opinion on on what I would use it for, and maybe that'll push you in a certain direction. So the 1025R is really just the staple, you know? It is the absolute best subcompact tractor that's out there. I think it outclasses the Kubota BX and all the competition. It's just not even close as far as their quick attach systems uh, for their mower deck, their loader, and their backhoe for its capability as far as how much it will lift with the front end loader and with the three point hitch. Just the overall package that you can get, all the different attachments that are out there to fit, all the accessories. We've kind of used this as our, our almost our model tractor. It's a, it's a working tractor, but you can see there's bucket brackets, tooth bar, uh, chainsaw holder, MUDS custom steps, grab handles, tie downs, I mean, canopies, you name it. There's all sorts of stuff on here that Many of these things will work on other tractors, a lot of John Deere tractors, um, not so much on all the Kubotas and everything else. There's certain things that will. I'm not gonna say that they, everything won't, but 
The point being is that there's just a whole world that's being built around the 1025R in general, and to a, a little bit of a lesser extent, um, the John Deere and then the rest of the compact tractor world too. So that 1025R, while it is the smallest in the tractor world, is a subcompact, is gonna be really a jack of all trades. You can mow your lawn with it. You know, I've used one of these at my home on a three acre, or a, a three quarter acre lawn uh, for a couple of years. It works really well for landscaping, for driveway snow removal, um, for mowing the lawn, for bagging leaves, for whatever you wanna do. It, it can do it, it's not too heavy. It's gonna be heavier than like a, a really nice riding lawn mower, but not crazy heavy. And it's gonna get you into that game as a complete package, as really the lowest price point you can get compared to anything else. So if you're looking for one machine to kind of do it all, it's really hard to beat. Now on that note, the 2025 is right on its heels, you know, except it's got bigger tires, as you can see. It's a little bit longer, sits up a little bit higher, but again, basically the same mower decks, the exact same front end loader, exact same backhoe, same options available. So everything about it is essentially the same. You get a little bit more lift uh, capacity on the three point hitch, but not significant. It's not gonna be a game changer. And so for all those reasons, you're paying a premium to get it. I just don't really see where it's justifiable to go from a 1025 to a 2025. So now let's say you don't need a mower deck, right? You need no belly mower, Maybe you don't even know you need a backhoe. You know, you don't want a nice factory cab on there. You just want a plain Jane workhorse. The John Deere 3E series might be the one for you, all right? And it's gonna get you into the tractor game at a pretty cheap price point. And it's 2022, prices are all over the map. Everything is increasing like crazy. Historically, the 1025 would be the cheapest uh, with just a loader, tractor and a loader, so we can compare equally. The 2025, and the 3025 would be just about the same, all right? And with a loader on them. And the prices are gonna be all over the map because of the times that we're living in. The dealers are charging different prices all over the place. Discounts are gonna vary. Uh, region of the country is gonna to vary too. So there's a lot, of, a lot of factors that come into play, but if you're really serious about buying a tractor, I mean, you'll reach out to your dealer and get those price points on the individual tractors so you can have solid numbers to go off of. So the customer looking for a John Deere 3E series tractor is really looking for kind of like a grounds maintenance, you know, like out here on, on some acres. It could be five acres, could be 10 acres. You know, it's gonna lift a little bit more than these smaller front end loaders, not a lot, but it's gonna lift a little bit more. Gonna lift it about six inches higher as well. Gonna have bigger tires on there. You can put more ballast weight in there too to feel uh, more planted to the ground. You can run a foot wider attachment. So if you wanna run a 60 inch brush hog on there versus a 48 inch brush hog on these couple of tractors, 60 inch tiller even. I, I would do that even though it's still 25 horsepower, it's just gonna handle it better. And so you may not wanna take a seven inch depth on your tiller, but I wouldn't hesitate to put a 60 inch tiller on the 3025E. This is really about the smallest size tractor that you wanna lift round bales with, all right? So you get to these smaller ones and you'll see some videos out there when they may be lifted off the ground, but that's really safely. The 3E is about the smallest size you wanna go. But think about it more of, a, a, well, kind of your utility jobs, your landscaping jobs with the, with the three-point hitch, with the front end loader, all that kind of stuff. And you can see we have a flail mower mounted on there right now. We've done uh, some finished mowing. You know, we've done some ditch bank mowing around the ponds, all sorts of stuff with it. So you can still put something on the backside if you want to, but you wouldn't get this thinking the main thing you're going to do with it is mow your lawn. Now let's talk about the similarities that these have, all right? And so these are all going to be selectable two- or four-wheel drive machines. So... You're gonna have that as a standard feature on all of them. They're all gonna be diesel engines in there. They're all gonna have folding ROPs, so you can fit it in a standard height garage if you want to. They're all gonna have a rear PTO on it, uh, 540 RPM, which is standard, a, a standard category one three-point hitch. So a lot of the kind of the basic framework is the same, right? So you're just gonna run typically smaller attachments on these smaller tractors compared to a little bit bigger attachments on the 3025E. For me, I find it annoying if you can't run an attachment to cover the width of the machine, like a tiller, for example. The 2025, you will, you're kind of in a, in a tweener mode, all right? So it's not very common to have a 54 inch box blade or tiller or brush hog. So you're typically gonna have 48 or 60. And you could, case by case scenario, run a 60 inch brush hog on here, run a 60 inch tiller on here. I wouldn't, typically recommend it. You know, I'm a fairly conservative guy. I want to make sure that anything that I sell as far as attachments go are gonna work just 
absolute 100% all the time for my customers. Now I put that out there just so that you're aware that 60 inch could be an option for you in certain attachments on the 2025R, but it's gonna come with limitations or restrictions or perhaps a, a slightly degraded um, level of production, but it gives you the full picture. Alrighty guys, that's gonna pretty much wrap up our comparison here and it's not all encompassing, but a lot of this is to get that conversation started. You know, the comment sections will fill up over time with folks that have one of these tractors or went through the same decision and, and have other insights or things that I missed, because I guarantee I missed some things in here too, but we're gonna wrap it up and then I'm gonna spend a couple of minutes, if you do wanna stick around, I'll walk you through all these accessories because if you're, you're shopping for your new tractor, it's fun to trick it out and make it your own and, and see what works for you and what you might want or might not want. So while we can't help with the tractor, we can definitely help with the tractor attachments. We sell and ship all over the country, goodworkstractors.com, that's the name of our company. You gotta go right onto the website Site. You can browse, see everything we have available. You can add it to your cart, go through the checkout system right there. We have a new rewards program, so you're gonna get rewards to use towards future purchases. I think they're, they're really good rewards too, so they're not just like a 1%. Right now it's 5%. We're gonna mix it up, vary, vary sales and things like that with time, just to have a lot of fun. So if you enjoy learning about tractors or watching tractors at work, we'd love to have you tag along. Hit that subscribe button right down below. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by, and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Alrighty guys, so like I was mentioning earlier, we have all sorts of different accessories that are on this tractor, but I kinda wanna go through just a rundown of things that are available for the front end loaders, for essentially all these tractors, and the three point hitch as well. So up front, again, you can take this bucket right off, all right, you can put on pallet forks, a grapple, a bale spear, a snow pusher, a snow plow. Oh, what am I forgetting? Anything else? That's a big bird, holy cow. Sorry about that, got distracted by a crane that was flying over. So anyway, that's a good list of things that can go on the front end loader. You can also accessorize your bucket if you want to. So these JU uh, Fabworks bolt-on brackets, we've talked about them before, but they give you more versatility, but they also protect the top edge of your bucket. John Deere standard duty buckets are a little, a little flimsy on that top edge, so some, some reinforcement here is really nice. They're part of the discount club. Same thing with this heavy hitch tooth bar down on the bottom. That's really handy to have and bolts on. Now we've got a lot going on. We do have a deluxe grill guard on here. The 511 Designs grill guard is stinking awesome. I love the look of it and the functionality. It has protected this tractor from having the radiator and the grill smashed in. We do have the Summit Hydraulics Do-It-Yourself Diverter Kit. That gives you the ability to have a hydraulic grapple up front, but if you don't, want to get that kit or invest in that, you can get something called a brush crusher that's completely mechanical, or you can get an electric grapple as well. That's a do-it-yourself install, very easy as well. And you can see we also have mirrors on here. You can get mirror brackets and grab handles and tie down points. There's a step on the other side too from Muds Customs, another discount club member. Up top, you're gonna to see this Rhino Hide Canopy. Actually, Chris and I bought this company at the beginning of the year. Whole new website coming out soon. These things are awesome, very lightweight. They're quick release, they only weigh about 15 pounds. One person can take them on and off very easy. It's called Rhino Hide. It's like super tough, all right? It's, it's kind of like that bed liner material, um, but one of the best values on the market. That's why I, I wanted to buy the company when, when Dom was ready to sell and retire. Uh, an amazing product right there. So uh, up top, we do have the big tool rack, okay? So these, you can tie on like tools across here if you want to. Um, and actually, I just brought over finally my big tool rack for the three-point hitch so you can put everything in there that thing's amazing and i've been waiting for a barn i finally got a barn so i can put it in there and get that thing all set up on the back side you're going to have all sorts of stuff going on all right a ton a world of options available this red quick hitch is a spico it's the best selling product we have by far it's basically the only one out there that doesn't use bushings i think there's a land pride model that costs quite a bit more um, and has a welded top hook this is an adjustable top hook completely like what a quick hitch is supposed to be. Uh, hitch hangers as well. This is a brand new prototype we have coming out. They should be for sale potentially this month, June 2022. So if you're watching in the future, you should see them on our website, but you can hang suitcase weights, 370 pound suitcase weights on either side. So 420 pounds plus like 30 pounds of the hitch hangers, extra 450 pounds of ballast weight, particularly handy for larger tractors. Um, or for attachments that don't have enough down pressure, like a rear blade or a landscape rake and you wanna have a more aggressive cut, good application for that. Obviously tillers available. This is a long laundry list for the three-point hitch, but tillers, brush hogs, rear blades, snow blowers, flail mowers, land planes, three-point 
post hole diggers, pulverizers, plows, um, oh, subsoiler, yep, disc harrows, core plug aerators. Well, you get the idea, it's like almost a never ending list of things that you can get for the three point hitch. And again, you want to size it accordingly, you know, 48 inch for your tillers, for your brush hogs. Now, there's exceptions to every rule. If you get a, a landscape rake, typically I'm gonna say get a 60 inch. Same thing with a rear blade because landscape rakes, well, they don't put really any load on the tractor, all right? And you can angle those as well. And so when you angle something, it's gonna narrow it up. So you wanna go a little bit wider. Oh, the Thatcher is another one too, very popular. And so virtually everything we said is available for all of these tractors, all right? There's a few exceptions here and there, but for the front end loader, for the three point hitch, a lot of these accessories we talked about too, you can find out more information on the website, so be sure to check it out, goodworkstractors.com. Good girl. Oh, that's a good girl. Oh, that's my babies. Oh, that's my babies. Sit. Can you sit? Sit. Stay. Can you stay? Stay. 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 Ah, ah, ah. Hey. Sit. Sit. Good girl. That's a good girl. That's a good girl. Stay. Stay, 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 ah! That was pretty good. That was pretty good, Jim. You did a good job. Okay.